Hi, my name is Nick Borson, and in this video, I'm going to, go, going to give a quick introduction to Git, which is really an essential tool for doing software development because it is how you keep track of all of your code, all of your files, all of your code, all of the other assets. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to talk about what Git is, how you get the Git tools, how you create a repository, a repo, how you commit changes to it, and also, as I walk through this, I'm going to be using both the Git command line and also the integration, the Git integration in Visual Studio. So, first of all, what is Git? Git is a version control system. There are lots of version control systems, but Git has become by far the dominant one. Uh, Git was developed when um, the Linux kernel team um, needed a version control system. They I think they lost their license to whatever they were a commercial system they were using before. So they decided to build their own, and the uh, uh, Linus Torvalds led the development of that, and it really took over the open source community and kind of took over the world, essentially, as far as version control goes. But what is a version control system? Essentially, it's a way of keeping track. It, it tracks changes to a set of files. So it manages a whole set of files, but it also um, retains the history of all those files. And this is essential both because it allows you to um, revert changes and so on, but also because that allows multiple people to collaborate because different people can all work on the same code base and they can merge their changes together and still have it all make sense rather than, you know, passing files back and forth and possibly overwriting each other's changes and so on. Version control allows people to collaborate in an orderly way. Um, so Git uh, is built around the concept of a repo. A repo or a repository is a set of files. Or we, you know, you can think of it as a set of files, but Git really thinks of it more as a set of commits. So a commit being a um, sort of an atomic change consisting of edits to, you know, could be additions to files, deletions to files, or edits to files. And, um, you know, if you add up all the commits from starting with an empty repo, add up all the commits, you get whatever your current, the current state of that repo is. So, um, you can create a Git repo locally. You could also clone a repo that exists on a server somewhere, such as on GitHub. Um, and then what you have is a, you have your own copy of that repo, but they're kind of linked together. So you can make your own changes. You can make your own changes locally, work entirely in within, within your own local repo, but then push changes to the to the uh, cloud and pull changes from the cloud, and that, that kind of synchronizes you with with the uh, the hosted the hosted repo. Um, so that brings me to GitHub. So uh, you might be tempted to just think that Git and GitHub are kind of the same thing. They're really different. Git is the, the core software for managing repositories. GitHub is one of several services that uh, host Git repos in the cloud, and they provide um, this capability of being able to um, you know, clone repos that exist on GitHub, and then you can also then push changes up to GitHub and merge them into the into the shared code base that exists there. So these kinds of services um, uh, are great collaboration tools and they have lots of features be going beyond just Git itself, but that's really a topic for another video. In fact, I've been thinking for a few weeks, if you wonder why I haven't posted any new videos in a while, I've been thinking for a few weeks that I uh, should create a video about Git, but then I got a little carried away. I thought, well, I'll need a repository to use as an example. So, so then I created an open source repo up on GitHub, and then I started, you know, working on that. And I spent the, all my free time for you know, the last few weeks working on this uh, open source project that I will share with you at some point. But for now, for this video, we're just going to talk about local repositories. So, before you can use Git, of course, you have to have the software. Um, if you're on Windows 11, one way you can install it is using Winget, which is kind of the package manager that's built into Windows 11. So if you do Winget search, you can find uh, find that there's uh, uh, find Git there in the kind of the uh, as an available software you can install, and then you can just say Winget install and install it. Um, but also, if you if you are use if you use Visual Studio, you probably already have Git. I believe that the Visual Studio installer installs Git by itself, or installs Git for you. Um, certainly, Visual Studio has Git integration built in, and there are lots of other ways to install Git, not just on Windows, but of course on Linux and Mac and any other OS. So uh, there's a link there to a 
help page on GitHub that tells you how to install Git on any operating system. And if I remember, I will include that in the description. All right, so here I have a terminal window open in full screen mode, and I'm going to create a Git repository locally. Now, like I said, it's often the case that you are uh, you might clone a remote repository, but you can also create one locally. Um, so I'm going to create, I'm going to do that, then I'm going to commit changes to it and show how to view the history um, all from the command line. So let's go ahead and create a directory first of all. I'm going to call it my repo. So md my repo, and I'll change into that directory. Okay. So so far I just have an empty directory. Um, if I do a listing, there's nothing in it. So if I say git init, now that repo has been turned, now that directory has been turned into a git repo. So there's still nothing in it, although actually there is a hidden directory called .git that has all the git magic. But you should really never touch that directory. That is entirely for the git software to manage for you. So that .git, that hidden .git directory is what makes this a repo. It means that git has information about about this that makes it a repository, including all the history of all the changes that have been committed to that repository. But the stuff in this my repo directory is your working tree. It is the set of files in their current state, in the current branch, plus any local changes you've made that have not yet been committed to the repo. That's all part of your working tree. So I'm going to clear the screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and add a file. I'm just going to call it readme.md, md for markdown. And to create this, I'm just going to say, um, hello world. Bang and set content. I'll pipe that pipe that string to the set content PowerShell commandlet readme.md, and now I have a um, readme.md file. If I look at its contents, it has the word "hello world" in it. So we can add this. So if, now, if I say uh, "get status," we see that there are no commit yet, no commit yet, no commits yet to this repo. Um, we're on branch main because that's the default. Um, branch. Git has this concept of branches. So if you have a history, you can have sort of parallel histories. These are different branches in the history, um, which is, you know, going to be very useful further on, but probably not in this video. Um, so then we have this readme.md file, which is an untracked file. So this is a file that I've added to my working tree that is not yet in the Git repo. So it's untracked. So in order to add it to the repo, it's done in two steps. First, we add the file and then we then we make the commit so adding the file just stages it to be part of the next commit so i'll say git add and i can say readme.md or i can say git add hyphen hyphen all which will add all untracked files and then if i say if i say git status again then we see that there is this um, this readme.md and is now listed as a new file that are among the changes to be committed. So when I do a commit, that commit is going to include this new file. So um, I can say git commit, and I can either just hit that, hit enter, and it will prompt me, it'll bring up an editor, text editor, and prompt me to enter a uh, message, or I can just type the message on the command line, and I'll say add readme.md, like so. And now if I say git status, we see that there's nothing to commit. The working tree is clean. The file is still there, but the working tree is clean because there's there are no changes in my working tree compared to what is in the repo. The working tree and the repo are now in sync with each other. But if I edit the readme.md file, I'll just, let's just say notepad readme.md, and, um, and let's just add some other text here. I'll, this is a markdown format, so I'll use a pound sign to make this a heading. Um, readme file for my repo. And I'll just say, you know, this is to demonstrate git. Okay. And I'll save that. Now, if I say git status, we again see that uh, readme.md shows up in red here. It's a, now it shows as a modified file. So it's, Git has recognized that, um, that the readme.md in my working tree now has changes compared to what is in the, uh, what has been committed to the repo, to the current branch of the repo. 
So again, I can say get add all, and um, and if I get if I say get status, we see that we have this modified file that's that's prepared, uh, waiting to be committed. If I say git commit, then we can say modify WMD. Okay, and now if I say git log, and if we want a sort of a short version of the log, we can have everything be on one line. And we can limit the output to the number of maximum number that we of uh, of uh, you know this is this is basically a series of commits that we're from the, starting with the most recent that we're going to output to the commit to the console, and so we're going to show the ten most recent commits. Of course, there are only two in this case. The first commit is add me readme read md, and then the most recent commit is modify readme md. So we have this history that we can see using the get log command. All right, we've seen how to create a uh, local git repo from the command line. Let's now look at the um, git integration in Visual Studio. So I'm going to create a, I've, I've uh, launched video, Visual Studio and I've chosen a new project and I'm going to uh, select the project template I'm going to create. I'm going to create a uh, C-sharp console application. This shows up in my recent list because I've done that recently, but you can always find that by selecting the language and um, if I say console, oop, oh, all right, hold on, back up. Then we see that we have a console app showing up right there. Um, I'm going to call my app um, hello CS console, and you know it's, it's going to put it under the default location, which is the repos directory in my. Um, uh, under my profile, and we can have the option of placing the solution and project in the same directory. I'll go ahead and do that. I hit next. Okay, I'm going to accept all the defaults. And once it's done, we have the sort of default uh, empty C Sharp console application open in Visual Studio. So we have a solution file and so on. Um, and if I were to browse to this directory, so it's hello CS console, we see that we have these various files. And if I look for a .git file, there is no .git file because it's not yet a Git repo. Now, if I select this Git Changes tab in uh, this in the uh, kind of Explorer pane here, then it says the Git version control isn't being used yet. So I can I can create a Git repository, and it gives me some choices. I can just I can actually create one and push it to a new remote. Um, so this is getting into the GitHub hosting, like I was talking about. Or uh, an alternative to GitHub is also Azure DevOps, which is um, Microsoft's more enterprise-focused um, uh, hosting solution. But I'm just going to create a local solution, or a local repo, rather. And I have the option of adding a readme file. I'm not going to bother with that right now. And I'll just hit Create. Okay. And now we have a local Git repository and all these files. It actually did create a uh, initial commit, actually, um, with the files that were added by the template. So now if I go back to my PowerShell window and I say um, ls.git, we see that there is a .git directory. If I say git status, we see that there is a, um, uh, there is a main branch. There's nothing to commit, just as we saw, just as we see here. There's nothing to commit because it already committed uh, the initial contents of the project. And if I say git log dash one line dash ten, we see that there is a um, add project files. Um, well, it's already created a couple of commits for me. Okay, so um, now one thing about the the um, about this is that if I can then, if, as I edit my changes, I can see that there are, just as before, if I want to change my program to do something else, like um, 
Well, let's see, maybe I'll make this a have a class program and static void main console that right line hello world. Just mistyping here. Okay, maybe I want to use this instead of using top level statements, I want to actually create a class with with a static main method. This is kind of the other way of, uh, of having your program entry point defined in, in C Sharp. And I can build that and I can run it and so on. And then if I go to my Get Changes tab, uh, we see that we have this change right there. And I can go ahead and say change to use program class. Or I'll just say add program class. Add program class. And I'll commit it all. Okay, and that's now part of my history. Now there's also a Git menu in Visual Studio, and if I go to that menu, I can see. Um, let's see, there's somewhere we can see the history. View branch history. There we go. Okay, and now we can see that there have been three commits to this repo. And uh, furthermore, I can even see what the contents of those commits. If I double click on Add Program Class, we can actually see all the changes. We can see that there's one file that was modified and we can see the old version of the new file. So we can actually go back and see the history of every change that was made to the repo using this branch, using this, uh, this history. So why is this useful? Well, it's useful even, I mean, it's especially useful when you're collaborating across multiple people working on the same project and you have this code base that's in the cloud. But for now, we're just talking about local repos. Even for local repos, this is useful because maybe I start working on my program and I decide, well, let's see, I want to I want to make some changes here. Um, uh, I want to uh, um, write some text. Okay, and then I'll say console dot write line. Yes, and then here instead of calling console write line, I say write some text. Okay, so I made a change here. And then I realized, you know, this really doesn't serve any purpose. I just want to go back to the way this was. Well, I can go back to the Get Changes tab here, and I can just right click on this and say Undo Changes. And I can do changes to selected file to everything or just to selected files. And when I do that, I go back to the way I was. So that kind of goes to this concept of a commit, right? Once you commit something to the repo, that means it's something that you're ready to commit to or accept. And you can actually, you can still undo it down the road, but you can more freely make changes and play around and experiment because you know you can always just revert back to the last known good state, if you will, to the state of the repo of things you've committed to the repo. And then when you're happy with what you've what you've, with the changes you've made, then you commit them to the repo. So that's kind of the workflow that you use when you're working with Git. You make changes, you play around, you experiment, and then when you have something that you're, that you're satisfied with as a, you know, as a useful step, then you make a commit. You give a name to that commit, and, you, and, and, and that's now part of the repo. And then you go to the next set of changes you want to make, and you play around, you make changes, you edit, you modify. You can always undo things if you don't have, if, if something, you know, doesn't work, turn out as well as you expected. And when you have something that you're ready to, um, that you want to keep, then you commit it to the repo. So it's a nice way of sort of staging your work so that um, uh, you, you always have something to go back to um, if, you, if, 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 uh, if some changes that you try that don't work out as well as you expect. So that's my Git 101 video. Now, as I already hinted, Git really comes into its own when you use it as a tool for collaboration uh, with many people, or multiple people at least, and uh, you have a shared repo that's hosted by um, GitHub or some other hosting service, uh, and, and, and each of you has a local repo that's a clone of that remote one, and you can merge your changes and so on. But that is a topic for another video. I promise I'd keep promise myself I'd keep this one short for once. So this is Git 101, and even, even working with a local repo, as we demonstrated here, um, there's a, 
it's very useful to be able to make changes freely and, and, and keep track of your history and be able to revert your changes and so on. So Git is a great thing to have, uh, a great thing to use if you're writing code. Uh, I hope you find it useful and stay tuned for my Git 201 video. Thank you.